Hey, this is Unit 5, Bacteria, Three Plants. We're going to finally start talking about plants. We're talking about plant classification today. Let's talk about it. All right, so what is a plant? A plant is a multicellular photosynthetic autotroph that has cell walls made out of cellulose. Very specific definition. There's some plants in that picture. Multicellular photosynthetic autotroph that have cell walls made out of cellulose. What do plants need? There's a big plant right there. Big plant. Plants need five things. You can see that this plant has some of those things, but you can't see all of it. Let's look at this picture. Plants need five things. They need water. Why do they need water? Remember, water supplies a steady stream of electrons so that photosynthesis happens. It also um, does a lot of cellular functions that we haven't really talked about yet in this class, but we that's okay. Light, obviously necessary for photosynthesis. Air, because it contains CO2, but not just the CO2, oxygen, other parts of the air that the plant needs as well. It needs space to grow, and so it needs uh, space. The plant can't grow unless it has just a place to grow, um, and some plants require a different amount of space than others. Look back at this plant. This plant required a lot of space. It made its own space. And nutrients, where does it get those from the soil? So plants generally need soil to grow. Not always, there are some exceptions to that, but they still need those nutrients, right, to make things like DNA, proteins, and other. Here's the basic life cycle of a plant. It's called alternation of generations. This is going to be a very important picture uh, in this whole unit, so, or in this particular half of the unit. <clears throat> so let's walk through this. We're not going to use the big words, gametophyte, sporophyte, yet today. We'll get to those when we talk about life cycles in 5.6. But all plants reproduce sexually and exist half of their life or part of their life in the haploid state and another part of their life in the diploid state and they alternate between these two, right? Remember we said haploid is like a half of a set of chromosomes and diploids when both sets are present. And so the haploid plant produces male and female gametes through the process of meiosis. This says spores, some plants produce spores. Technically all plants produce spores, we're gonna get there. Um, and so those spores grow up and produce gametes, male and female gametes, sperm and egg, and those gametes can burn in, uh, combine, the process is called fertilization, into a diploid uh, uh, structure called a zygote, which is a diploid or 2N, and that zygote grows up to be the full plant, which goes through meiosis, produces spores, goes through the whole thing again. And so this is called the alternation of generations. All plants are going to follow this basic structure there's going to be some things we're going to add to them uh, but all plants follow this basic structure of life uh, cycle seeds and spores a couple words you need to know they are not the same thing spores are very basic structures are usually haploid structures produced by the sporophyte generation of the plant it goes back to this picture here we'll give a definition for sporophyte on 5.6 but they're produced by the sporophyte generation of the plant very simple uh, seeds, on the other hand, are diploid. They contain the zygote, but not just the zygote. Uh, they're like self-contained structures. You could even call them the plant themselves. They're the first kind of part of the plant. The plant will grow out of the seed. The seed has everything the young plant needs in order to survive until it can reach up and touch the sun. And so uh, seeds, very complex structures, spores, pretty simple structures. What about these two words here? vascular versus non-vascular. What does it sound like? Sounds like veins, right? So a vascular plant has them. See that big leaf there on the right? I believe that's a big leaf maple. Uh, that's what that tree is called. And it has, uh, has the veins. You can see them very clearly. Whereas on the left, it's a non-vascular plant. It's like mosses are an example of a non-vascular plant. Do not have any sort of veins. So they have to be small. Uh, what's the purpose of these veins? Distribute nutrients. Distribute water throughout the plant things that the plant needs. So we're going to look at five or four different classifications of plants if that we're going to go over in this class. And uh, as far as today is concerned, I'm going to give you basic definitions of these plants and um, give you maybe a couple of examples of them as well. Bryophytes, these are mosses, and uh, these are seedless, non-vascular plants that are able to grow little or no soil and they have to inhabit moist environments. So seedless non-vascular plants, able to grow with little or no soil, have to, uh, no, have to have a moist environment in order to reproduce. Mosses are a great example. There are these other things called liverworts and hornworts. 
No idea what those things are. Ferns. Lots of ferns uh, in that picture. Uh, lots of ferns in that forest. And so what is a fern? Well, it's a seedless vascular plant. So we still don't have seeds yet, but we now we have vascular systems, uh, strong roots. They need soil in order to grow, cannot grow without soil. Um, there's some other examples of this group. But we're just going to call them ferns. So notice this is like a specific scientific word. This is just ferns just because there's groups of ferns, and we're just going to settle with ferns, and it's going to be okay. Next is gymnosperms. So gymnosperm, what is that? These are like conifers, like uh, Christmas trees, evergreen trees. I said Christmas trees like it's a type of tree. It's okay. Uh, it's, it's almost December here. Uh, so, um, yeah, con like cone trees, any kind of cedar, or spruce, anything like that. You can see those trees there. And these are seed-bearing vascular plants. So these have seeds. They're vascular. They don't have flowers, though. And so they produce uh, their reproductive organs are on something called cones. We're going to talk about that later. And they have shallow root systems. Um, that's why you see that one then that fell down. They don't really last very long. And lastly, angiosperms. These are seed-bearing vascular plants that produce flowers and fruit. Seed-bearing vascular plants produce flowers and fruit. Uh, if you think of a plant, it is probably an angiosperm. These are the most widely distributed, most successful plants in the world. As far as uh, when I say successful, evolutionary successful, meaning they have spread over the world and taken over any and every single um, spot, pretty much, that there are plants. Not every place has plants, but you get the idea. And so angiosperms, very successful group of organisms. Flowers, fruit are the main uh, ideas there. Uh, some types of angiosperms. Well, these are a couple words we need to know. Monocot, dicot. Look at the prefix. Mono means one. Dicot means two. And so um, what do we need to know? So monocots have a single cotyledon leaf. What does that mean? So like the barley that we grow for our experiment, uh, they're, they're monocots. A single leaf will come up out of the ground, right? And that is called the cotyledon leaf. It's what the seed is partially made out of. And so um, that's one of the things. Um, they have parallel veins like grass, right? Or you can see the, the picture there, parallel veins. They have fibrous roots. Like an example would be like grass. You can see down here, fibrous roots. There's my, there's my cursor. See the fibrous roots down here. And what about a dicot? Everything's, what it's, uh, everything's the opposite kind of. Dicot, two cotyledon leaves. So when they come up, they'll have like the... You know, the two leaves come out of the ground. And so they have branched veins in their leaves. And they have a taproot system, which is one single root that goes way down and lots of little roots that go off of that. And then annuals and perennials. These are words you've probably heard before. Famous and not famous. They're like gardening, you know. What does an, what does an annual sound like? It sounds like year, right? And so uh, this when a plant goes through its entire life, see, a life cycle in a single growing season, and the only thing left at the end of that is seeds. The seed grows up, becomes a new plant. And so think of these plants that just last one growing season and they die. And the only thing left is a seed, uh, evidence that they lived. A perennial. A perennial is a plant that keeps coming back every year. Have you ever heard the term like perennial champions or something like that? It means they're champions all the time. Their root systems at least stay intact uh they could be more than that like a tree for instance the trees outside right now it's the end of november they are dormant they're perennials those trees will probably come back in the spring unless they die over winter but they will they're called perennials because they um will go through multiple growing seasons in their life as opposed to an annual which just goes through a single growing season